Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get any updates to our forecast or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we may have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line 1-800-472-0391. Get any updates to the forecast who that means as well. And feel free to email us at the email address on the bottom of the screen. Starting off, we'll take a quick look at the warnings and advisories that we do have out for the state now. Starting off in the Alaska Peninsula, we have a blizzard warning that is in effect now, and that will last until around 6 a.m. on Wednesday. As we move up into the middle Kuskokwim Valley, we do have a winter storm warning that is out for snow, and that is going to be in effect until 9 p.m. this evening. We have a blizzard warning out for areas of the western part of the Kenai Peninsula, specifically around the Kachemak Bay area, and that is in effect until 6 a.m. on Wednesday. As we move up to the north in the Anchorage Bowl area, we do have a winter weather advisory out for snow, and that is going to be in effect from 9 p.m. this evening until 6 a.m. on Wednesday. As we look up a little bit further to the north around Willow area and the Willow Creek area specifically, we do have a flood advisory that is still out and remains in effect through Wednesday. And then we'll look further to the north. So all along the west coast of the state, we have strong northerly winds with some strong cold air being brought down from the north that is resulting in wind chill advisory conditions for the entire west coast of the state and all the way down through the YK Delta area. Primarily, those are going to be in effect until 6 p.m. on Wednesday. However, there's a little variation for some of the areas to expire a little bit sooner than that. Please check your local area specifically for those exact details. Out a little bit to the west for the St. Lawrence Island area into the Bering Strait coastline, we have another blizzard warning that is in effect. That one is out until midnight tonight. As we look a little bit further to the east, starting in the western part of the interior around Galena, extending out into much of the central interior and up throughout all of the Brooks Range, we do have winter weather advisories for snow in effect. Primarily those are out until 6 p.m. Wednesday. Again, there is some fluctuation in that time. Please check your local areas for those exact details. And then up along the Arctic coastline, winter storm warnings for snow for those eastern locations. And those are going to be in effect until 9 p.m. on Wednesday. Down in the eastern part of the Alaska Range, we do have a wind advisory out for that area as well. Taking a look at our satellite imagery, we'll start off, we have a low pressure system pushing into around the Kenai Peninsula area. That is what is bringing up a lot of that moisture over much of the state, resulting in all that snow for many of those locations. So we watch again, you can see on the back side of this that there is some cold air coming in. That is resulting in some of those stronger winds and blowing snow conditions for some of those locations that is extending out towards the Alaska Peninsula and also into that southern portion of the Kenai Peninsula area. Out over the southeastern part of the state, we have a weaker system pushing to the south that is bringing some areas of precipitation to the Panhandle as well. And then we'll take a look out over the eastern part of the Bering Sea through the northern portions and through the Bering Strait area. We can really see that northerly flow coming down, bringing in all that colder air, resulting in those wind chill conditions for the west coast of the state. As we take a look at the remainder of the day, we do have some more scattered and isolated showers out over much of the Bering Sea, pushing down into areas of the Aleutian Islands and out into the Alaska Peninsula as well. And then up along the coastline, not as much new precipitation along the coast, but as we get further to the north, St. Lawrence Island area, enough snow showers with that strong cold air to bring in some of those blizzard conditions until midnight tonight. That extends up further to the north, those blowing snow conditions also at Point Hope area, just not quite blizzard conditions up there. Along the Arctic coastline, we do have some snow out to the east, and then all throughout the interior, we have snow pushing in through all that central and western portions, a little bit less precipitation out to the eastern portions of the interior. As we look out over the Gulf of Alaska, that southerly flow bringing up some warmer air behind this warm front that has transitioned some of the precipitation, especially along the coast over to rain, pushing into areas where we'll start off as rain for areas around uh, Anchorage tonight that's going to change over around 9 p.m. to more of snow showers, bringing in that heavier snow throughout the night. And then as we look down in the Panhandle area, primarily rain right now, still a lot of warmer air from that strong southerly push that we saw behind the system out to the west. That's bringing in uh, rain to much of the Panhandle. Exception further areas to the north, really far up by the Haines and Skagway area, we are going to see primarily snow throughout the remainder of today. As we move into tonight, we will see that colder air starting to push across the rest of the Gulf of Alaska transitioning some of that rain over to the snow showers that's going to continue to spread further to the east as we move through the night. 
and many of the areas, especially the more interior locations of the Panhandle, transitioning back over to snow. Snow showers expected for the rest of south central Alaska with some of that stronger northerly flow coming in and reinforcing the colder air in those locations. Much of the western and central interior going to continue to see snow throughout the night and along the Arctic coastline and including the Brooks Range, we are going to continue to see snow. Snow and blowing snow along much of the west coast, especially around the Seward Peninsula, out towards St. Lawrence Island as well. Some lighter snows are getting to the YK Delta area down through Bristol Bay and then an enhancement of snow showers as we're getting that northerly wind, especially on the Bering side of the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutian Islands, going to see some snow and wind there. And then as we move into Wednesday, still going to see that northerly flow throughout the central eastern parts of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, including the Alaska Peninsula. More snow and more wind out in those locations. However, with the slow pressure system pushing further off to the east, we are expecting those winds to diminish somewhat, especially for these areas along the Alaska Peninsula, pushing throughout the day on Wednesday. We are going to see continued snow through much of the interior along the Arctic coastline, Brooks Range, down into south central Alaska as well. And we can see all the precipitation in southeast Alaska changing over to snow as we're getting that colder air wrapping around the slow pressure system, pushing through the Gulf of Alaska and bringing that snow into areas of the Panhandle. Exception down by Ketchikan, a little bit warmer there. A mix of rain and snow is expected. And then as we move into Thursday, a new system coming up from the south, bringing back a little bit of the warmer air, starting to transition some areas out by the uh, Gulf of Waters in the Panhandle area back to rain. However, all the inside waters and more inland locations should be expecting snow for Thursday. On the North Gulf Coast, going to see snow for South Central Alaska. However, as we get to the more interior locations in the Susitna Valley, Copper River Basin, not expecting much precipitation for those areas on Thursday. Northern portions of the interior, expecting to see some snow through the Brooks Range and much of the Arctic coastline as well. And as we drop down the west coast of the state, continuing to see some areas of blowing snow around the Point Hope area. Some more snow for Seward Peninsula down into the YK Delta area, out through much of the central and eastern part of the Bering Sea, down into the central and eastern Aleutians as well. And a new system coming up from the west, bringing primarily snow to the western Aleutian Islands, but enough warm air to be a mix of rain and snow to those locations. Taking us into our temperatures, starting off in the Aleutian Islands, we're going to drop below freezing right around 30 degrees for those western Aleutian Islands and then dropping down into the teens as we get to the Alaska Peninsula and going below zero for the Bristol Bay area, well below zero for the YK Delta area as well into those uh, teens or negative teens into the McGrath area up through the western portions of the interior Seward Peninsula as well. Gamble getting down to minus six for Wednesday morning and then along the Arctic coastline expecting temperatures to be pretty similar to the west coast and you can really see where that colder air is with the northerly winds coming down on the western portions of the state to include the Arctic coastline. Coldest area in the state for Wednesday morning is going to be through the pass at minus 21 degrees. A little bit warmer in those central and eastern portions of the state where we will have temperatures still staying below zero for the most part in the interior but only in those single digits below. Then as we drop down into south central Alaska, getting down into the mid-20s for interior locations, just below freezing along the north Gulf Coast. Kodiak a little bit colder. They're seeing some of that northeast wind bringing in the colder air, getting down to my, or positive 14 degrees for tonight. Staying well above freezing in the Panhandle area in the mid to upper 30s. And as we move into Wednesday afternoon, getting up to right around 40 degrees for many locations in southeast Alaska. And as we move back into South Central Alaska, we're seeing some of the warmer air linger in there, protected by the Alaska Range, much of the cold air staying off to the west or to the north of the area, getting up into the mid-20s for many locations or at freezing for areas around Prince William Sound for Cordova and Valdez, both at 32 degrees for highs Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. In the interior, some places getting above freezing with Fairbanks getting up to one degree above zero. Or not above freezing, but above zero rather, with one degree for Fairbanks expected. Up into the Brooks Range, staying below zero, and then getting up to negative 14 for the Dead Horse area right around Ukiagvik as well. And those places just a few degrees warmer than those uh, low temperatures overnight. Along the west coast, again, not getting much of an increase, just a degree or two for improvement from the nighttime temperatures there, getting up to right around minus 10 for much of the YK Delta in southwest Alaska. Then the Alaska Peninsula getting up into the 20s and then getting up above freezing for the western and central Aleutian Islands with St. Paul getting up to 20 degrees Wednesday afternoon. For Thursday morning, staying out there for St. Paul, 
14 degrees expected for the low temperature overnight. And then as we drop into the Aleutian Islands, at or just below freezing, getting colder as we get further off to the east and to the teens for the Alaska Peninsula, into the negative teens for the Bristol Bay area, staying closer to minus 10 for much of the YK Delta area, and then the single digit negative numbers for all over around the Seward Peninsula with uh, Kotzebue getting down to minus 7 up along the Arctic coastline into the negative teens there. Once again, we have one of the colder temperatures being through the pass at minus 18, but McGrath will hold the coldest temperature for Thursday morning at minus 20. Single digit negative numbers for much of the interior and into the single digits for South Central as we finally have that colder air ushering into South Central Alaska on Thursday morning. Staying pretty warm for Southeast Alaska, just dropping just below freezing. Then on Thursday afternoon, getting up above freezing for most locations, but uh, quite a bit closer to freezing than we saw on the previous afternoon. Then as we move into South Central Alaska, getting up into the teens, Cordova a little bit warmer there, 25 degrees expected high. Into the single digit negative numbers for the interior throughout Galena at minus eight, and then along the Arctic coastline, staying in those negative teens taking us down the west coast of the state. Single digit negative numbers for the Seward Peninsula and YK Delta area and for the Bristol Bay area. Down in the Aleutian Islands, Alaska Peninsula is getting up into the lower 20s for the Alaska Peninsula and above freezing as we get out uh, into the Aleutian Islands with Shimmy at 38 degrees and St. Paul getting up to 22 degrees. We'll be back shortly with the aviation section. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Starting off with aviation, we'll take a quick look at our flying weather. Out over the central and eastern parts of the Bering Sea, we are looking at some MVFR and IFR conditions, especially as we get closer to the Bristol Bay area. Out over mainland Alaska, western portions are seeing quite a bit of IFR conditions in western parts of the interior through Galena area and Ambler as well. And then up along the Arctic coastline, IFR conditions expected. South central Alaska and north Gulf Coast into southeast Alaska, IFR conditions are expected for Wednesday morning. Then on Wednesday afternoon, clearing up in southeast Alaska to being a lot of MVFR conditions with some areas of VFR as we get closer to the Gulf of Alaska. Out over mainland Alaska, widespread MVFR conditions with more IFR as we get further to the west and up further to the north along the Arctic coastline. Out over the central and eastern parts of the Bering Sea, continuing to see MVFR and IFR conditions on Wednesday afternoon. Then on Thursday morning, pretty similar for the Bering with the central and eastern parts of the Bering Sea, seeing some MVFR and IFR conditions. Then up along the Arctic coastline, we are going to see MVFR and IFR up there as well. Through the much of the interior, MVFR conditions are expected. A lot of South Central have also cleared up Thursday morning. With the exception of along the North Gulf Coast, some MVFR and occasional IFR conditions are expected. And then Thursday morning for the Panhandle, we are seeing primarily MVFR conditions. As we move into Thursday afternoon, VFR conditions throughout much of the southeastern part of the state until we get down to the more southern locations around Ketchikan where we are going to see some IFR conditions. VFR for much of south central Alaska with MVFR as we get closer to the north Gulf Coast and up in the northern parts of the interior through the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline we are going to see some MVFR and IFR conditions. Moving down the west coast of the state we have, do have MVFR IFR conditions with the exception of the southern areas of the YK Delta and northern portions of Bristol Bay. Then throughout the Bering Sea we are going to have primarily MVFR conditions. As we look through the passes, we'll start up north at Anktuvik Pass. IFR conditions are expected for Wednesday as well as at Adigan Pass. Lake Clark and Merrill should both be IFR throughout the day. However, Rainy Pass will start off IFR and then improve to marginal conditions later in the day as well as Windy Pass. Isabel will start off VFR and then drop down to marginal conditions in the afternoon. And Mentasta will stay at MVFR conditions throughout the day. So look at Tanita Pass starting off IFR, improving to MVFR conditions. That will be true for Portage as well. And then Chilkoot and White will both start off IFR and improve to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Taking a look at our freezing levels, we have a tongue of warmer air pushing in over southeast Alaska with our surface freezing line a little bit to the north, coming in through the north Gulf Coast and then staying south of Kodiak Island in the Alaska Peninsula before crossing the central Aleutian Islands and then hugging just to the north of the Aleutian Islands out to the west. Taking a look at our icing out over the eastern Aleutian Islands, Alaska Peninsula area between 3,000 and 7,000 feet. Much of mainland Alaska will have some icing conditions, primarily below 5,000 feet for much of the main part of the state, and then down in southeast below 6,000 feet expected there. 
If you look at our jet stream, we do have a portion of the jet coming in of a southeasterly direction over south central Alaska, pushing out towards the west coast around 55 knots there, changing directions to become more southwesterly and picking up with speed as it moves off the coastline to up to as high as 85 knots. Down to the south, in uh, the parts of northern part of the Pacific, we do have the strongest portion of the jet up to 200 knots there out of a westerly direction. And out over the western Aleutian Islands, we have a northerly component of the jet around 90 knots. For 9,000 feet out over the Bering, we do have primarily northerly flow and then splitting becoming more northwesterly for these eastern portions going to the Aleutians Alaska Peninsula around 40 to 45 knots. Being a little more easterly as we get to the western Aleutians and weaker around 15 knots there. Out over the mainland part of the state, we have a lot of southeasterly flow, getting as high as 40 knots as we get closer to our low pressure system, and becoming more northerly along the west coast, as high as 35 to 40 knots. And then the strongest winds are to the south of the low by Kodiak Island, around 55 knots there out of that westerly direction. And southerly flow, 30 to 35 knots out over the panhandle. Drop down to 3,000 feet southwesterly flow over the panhandle, 30 to 35 knots, and then dropping off pretty quick as we move further inland. Mainland Alaska, we're seeing an easterly component, strongest through the Brooks Range area, around 45 knots there. And then northerly flow along the west coast of the state, 40 to 60 knots is in the northwestern portions of the state, pretty strong up there. Dropping down to around 35 knots towards Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, and then back up to around 50 knots out of a westerly direction just to the south of our low near Kodiak Island. Weaker flow out over the remainder of the Bering Sea, dropping down pretty low to 10 to 20 knots as we get closer to the central and western Aleutian Islands. For our turbulence all along the west coast, those stronger winds, primarily below 4,000 feet, are expected. A little bit higher by Kodiak Island, below 5,000 feet there, and then below 6,000 feet for the Panhandle. We'll be back shortly with the marine section. We're at Vandenberg Air Force Base for about 20 minutes before the launch of ISAT-2. You might see the white light off in the distance, that's the Delta II rocket. It's, it kind of feels like an idea that was always going to just main, stay an idea. Uh, but no, it's it's real, it's sitting on top of the rocket. You know, and for me it's kind of surreal. Like you say, it's been 10 years and it's hard to believe. It's like, we're, we're really here? This is really about to happen? It's totally cool. Dr. Tom Newman. Over the years, his work has taken him to some pretty remote areas to study changes in the ice regions of our planet. And his research, among many others, has defined the goals of the new NASA satellite, the Ice, Cloud, and Land Elevation Satellite 2, or ISAT 2. And we have ignition and the story of ISAT 2 really begins with ISAT 1. ISAT told us all kinds of cool things about the ice sheet and about sea ice that we didn't really know to ask. That data allowed us to measure elevation change of ice sheets in a way that we hadn't been able to before and showed that all the action on the ice sheets, the places that were really changing quickly, were around the edges. So when we were thinking about what could we do better next time, we knew that was one key component. In addition to the edges of the ice sheets, ISAT-2 needed to measure a dimension of sea ice that remained elusive, its thickness. To figure out how thick sea ice is, you can measure the height of ice sticking out of the ocean, or freeboard, and compare it to the height of water between the sea ice flows, called leads. The problem is, sea ice is really dynamic, and those cracks open and close various places in the ice pack throughout the day, throughout the year, and what we need to do is have measurements of the ocean whenever it's available, wherever it occurs in the sea ice pack. To solve that problem, ISAT-2 was designed with a fast pulsing laser instrument to take precise, near-continuous measurements across its three pairs of beams. For 10 years, everything about the mission was designed to measure rapid changes in the most rapidly changing part of the cryosphere. But it has to get into space first. But it's a huge, huge transition going from the ground to in space. We've spent the better part of 10 years Thousands of people have been involved and actually seeing the rocket there on the pad with all of that work kind of all put together in, in one place, it's, it's pretty amazing. 
and then getting up in the middle of the night to go watch the actual launch, it's sort of surreal in a way because you've put so much time into it for so long and, and actually seeing it over there is like, <laughs> whoa, you know, it's, uh, it's a big deal. So Atlas has been turned on over the course of the first few weeks of the mission, uh, really culminating for us with the, with the laser. So this is our first look at sea ice data uh, from ISAT-2, and it looks fantastic. The signal levels look great. We've got plenty of photons there. We're capturing ridges. We can clearly see the ocean. Um, all sorts of cool stuff in there, and this is just our first data. It's only going to get better from here on out. The data from ISAT-2 is well on its way into digging deeper into the unknown dimensions of sea ice, ice sheets, and glaciers. It will shed light on changes in sea level and global weather patterns, and once again find new things about ice we didn't know to ask. So my heart is definitely racing. I don't know about anyone else's. This is the stuff nerds dream of. A uh, slight chance the flight may see ice at two in their center windscreen. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, That's five, happen. four, three, two. And now, marine weather around Alaska. We'll start off our marine section with a quick look at the ice edge. We do now see that we have ice all the way around St. Lawrence Island and down through Nunavik Island as well. We have ice extending into the Bristol Bay area and we also have some ice in the northern parts of Cook Inlet. Taking a look at our marine forecast for the Gulf of Alaska here we have primarily westerly winds 25 to 30 knots. Seas up to as high as 20 feet, the highest to the south. And then in the inside waters, we have southeasterly flow 20 knots, increasing as we get further to the north up to 30 knots there. On Thursday, we have primarily a south to southeast direction in the inside waters, 10 to 15 knots. And winds dropping down a bit and becoming more southerly in the Gulf, around 15 knots out of that south direction. Seas as high as 16 feet. For the areas around south central Alaska, primarily westerly flow on Wednesday, 25 to 30 knots. For areas around the Gulf, Prince William Sound, southwesterly winds at 20 knots there. In Cook Inlet, southerly directions increasing as we get further to the south. And as we get closer towards Kamishak Bay, we do have winds up to storm force at 50 knots out of that westerly direction. Seas as high as 16 feet in the western part of the Gulf and up to 19 feet as we get into the northern parts of the Gulf of Alaska. On Thursday, uh, northerly flow 15 knots in Cook Inlet becoming westerly as we get closer towards the Barren Islands and then getting up to 25 to 30 knots as we get out into the Gulf and southeasterly flow 25 knots in Prince William Sound. Out over the Alaska Peninsula on Kodiak Island, primarily a northwesterly wind component, 40 to 45 knots for the most part, a little bit weaker through Shelikov Strait, 30 knots there. Seas as high as 22 feet as we get closer towards the Gulf of Alaska. Then on Thursday, uh, flow becoming a little bit more dynamic here. We have northerly winds in the Shelikov Strait, 25 knots. West to southwest winds on the southern side of Kodiak Island, 20 to 25 knots there. Northwesterly winds around the Alaska Peninsula, 30 to 35 knots with seas up to as high as 12 feet, highest on the Bering side. Then for the Aleutian Islands, northwesterly flow 25 to 30 knots for the central and eastern part of the Aleutians. And then as we push out to the western Aleutians, winds switching up, becoming more southeasterly around 25 knots there. On Thursday, staying out of the southeast direction, but picking up to around 40 knots with seas as high as 16 feet. Moving back to the central and eastern part of the Aleutian Islands, northwesterly flow, 35 to 40 knots out over the more eastern location, seas as high as 15 feet, strongest on the Bering side. As we move back towards the central Aleutian Islands, dropping down a little bit, 25 to 30 knots. Along the west coast of the state, primarily northerly flow, pulling down all that colder air. We are seeing 
Uh, winds into the gale force range 35 to 45 knots, dropping down as you get closer towards the Pribilof Islands around 30 knots there, and in the Norton Sound area around 30 knots as well. On Thursday, staying out of that northerly direction, again, gale force winds for much of the area 35 to 45 knots, uh, a little bit lower on the southern side of Nunavik Island, 25 knots there, and then in Norton Sound, 25 knots as well. Up along the Arctic coastline, north to northeasterly flow, 15 to 20 knots. As we get along the west coast of the state, getting up to as high as 40 to 45 knots around the Bering Strait area. Then on Thursday, up along the Arctic coastline, north to northeast flow, 20 knots there. Along the west coast of the state, out of the northerly direction, picking up to as high as 40 to 45 knots, strongest again as we get by the Bering Strait area. For our weather for the remainder of the day, we have our low pressure system out over south central Alaska that is bringing in a lot of colder air, northerly flow to the western portions of the state and into the Bering Sea as well. All along the west coast of the state, we do have wind chill advisories out that are going to be going into Wednesday. And then as we get down to the Alaska Peninsula, blizzard warning out for that area. We have some heavier snow as we get into the lower parts of the Kuskokwim Valley. And we will have snow throughout much of the interior part of the state and south central Alaska. We do have winter weather advisories for snow for much of the western central interior up into the Brooks Range and winter storm warnings for snow up along the northeastern parts of the Arctic coastline. We do have a blizzard warning around the Kachemak Bay area of the Kenai Peninsula and we also have a winter weather advisory for snow for the Anchorage area. Then down in southeastern part of the state, we're getting enough warm air out ahead of this cold front to have transitioned over to some rain for the area. More interior and higher elevations expected to see more snow. And as we move into Wednesday, that cold air is going to push all the way through, bringing snow back to pretty much all of southeast Alaska, with the exception of southern portions by Ketchikan, where we will see a mixture of rain. Snow throughout much of mainland Alaska through south central, southwestern part of the state, up into the interior and up along the Arctic coastline. Northerly flow through the Bering Strait area will bring blizzard conditions uh, into the early parts of Wednesday for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait coastline, or rather that's going to be in this evening into midnight tonight blizzard conditions for those areas and then snow throughout the Bering Sea, Aleutian Islands and for the Alaska Peninsula. For Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Have a happy new year. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank <laughs> you.